Hello, Hello, we're Moss Charmley. And today we're going to give you an introduction to Krita so you can get started having fun with it. This is our first Krita tutorial with, you know, more on the way. So I'm sure you're aware that there are plenty of Krita tutorials out in the interweb <laughs> and they are really great. Ours might be a little different and our point of creating a tutorial is to make it faster and easier to enjoy Krita as soon as possible. So it's a great program and we really recommend it. Okay, so what is Krita? <laughs> Krita is a professional, free, and open source painting program. It is made by artists that want to see affordable art tools for everyone. They've created a community and a program with all you need to grow as an artist, all the features you need, with free education and resources, a supportive community, and a friendly forum that is very welcoming. Yeah, it's very friendly. <laughs> they are people. So, um, also, like, what does open source even mean? That's a good question. Yeah, so, open source is a term that originally referred to open source, open source software, OSS. So, open source software is code that is designed to be publicly accessible. Anyone can see, modify, and distribute the code as they see fit. So, open source software is developed in a decentralized and collaborative way relying on peer review and community production. So open source software is often cheaper, more flexible, and has more longevity than its proprietary peers because, de because it is developed by communities rather than a single author or company. It, it, you know, that enhances its reliability as well as longevity. Yeah, so if like little bugs happen, oh, yeah. it's faster to... They're on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. You know, if you're interested in supporting Krita, um, you absolutely can. We're also linking a description below so you can contribute to their open source, you know, awesomeness. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> yeah, so... You can actually do a lot with Krita. It is really an amazing digital art tool. You can even animate using Krita or make comics and manga. But we are just going to show you some basics on how to get started. Um, so you can just start with doing your digital art and getting your awesome vision out there with as little turbulence as possible, really. So let's get started. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first thing to do is to download this free software on your computer mm -hmm. if you already haven't. Mm -hmm. So it's super easy to do go to their website, we'll link it below, and choose which OS you're using and start downloading. Krita is compatible with old and new Macs, also Windows, but don't forget Linux, and open source OS. Uh, we prefer, we prefer uh, Fedora KDE Plasma Desktop Edition. One more thing, there are other alternatives than Krita.org for installation, like Steam, Epic Game Store, and the Windows Store. These alternatives are going to make you pay for Krita, but there is an upside to paying for it because the proceeds go to support Krita and it will be automatically updated when new updates come out. Updating it yourself isn't a problem, so it's your choice. Use Steam if you prefer to pay because it will work on any OS. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after you've installed it, welcome to the Krita. <laughs> Two will enter one. No, this isn't the Thunderdome. <laughs> Just kidding. It looks confusing. It looks like it's very intense. It'll be okay. You know, every time you open Krita, you will be greeted by the welcome screen. There will be no canvas um, or new document open by default. There are three columns um, to choose from. The first is the start. The next is the community. And the last is news. Under the start, you will have options to create a new file or open an existing document, which is displayed in the box below. The next is community. This is where you will find manuals, tutorials, and find out about fellow artists on, you know, on how they use Krita and what they're doing with it. Um, there's also a place to donate to Krita. Um, this is usually overlooked, but check it out it has a lot to offer for everyone really yeah <laughs> you know finally the third column is news it is not enabled by default but you should enable it because it can keep you up to date on krita's updates 
bugs fixes, you know, cool news and stuff about Krita's artists and, you know, connected projects. Uh, it's, it's just a really nice feature to have, so definitely enable it. Yeah. So. so now let's create a new file. You have options, a great deal of options. Uh, custom document, animation templates, uh, comic templates, even manga, you know, design templates, uh, even some for web design, DSLR templates, and finally texture templates. There's We're, a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> We're going to create a custom document. There are many predefined image sizes, but we're going to make a custom one. Mm -hmm. So now you have access to all the tools and docs. Once you've created that document. Yeah. The workspace is very different, but it is customizable. There are free set workspaces and you can customize it to sit the way you like, you know, to work, you know. There's a lot of familiar, you know, a lot to familiarize yourself with, you know, like the dashboard and the tools in the beginning. Um, you don't have to worry, it just looks overwhelming, but it really isn't. You just need a translation matrix. Okay, beware of the TED talk about to happen. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all of the digital art programs from Clip to Photoshop, even Painter, are all created with the artist in mind. And that is you. The companies have to make these programs look different and even use different lingo to differentiate themselves from the other digital art programs out there. Yeah. In truth, they really aren't that different. And believe it or not, that little com comment will probably bring on bring in that landslide of comments on you know, on our incorrectness about the you know, <laughs> non-differences between all our programs. But yeah. just hear us out. All digital art programs are created so the artist feels at home or familiar, but you can't forget the one thing that they all do. They all turn ones and zeros into whatever beauty you can create from your imagination. Okay, now that you've endured that, let's customize the workspace. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, there's a lot, to, a lot of options that you can see before you. So um, you might want to customize your workspace, especially depending upon what program you came from. So taking the time to make it more familiar to you will really help, you know, that tr transition along. Yeah. You know, it'll make it a lot easier for you in the long run. So take the time to do it. Yeah. So in Krita, your workspace is contrived of the little sub windows. They're called dockers, which is funny because that is also a term for longshoremen and khaki pants. <laughs> Don't get confused. <laughs> so um, the dockers contain useful tools like the color selector, layer stack, tool options, etc. You can put them wherever you want. So, you know, you can mimic the workspace you are accustomed to. We're going to copy a CSP, or Clip Studio Paint workspace, we, that we use, and we hope it can help you with customizing yours. Okay, so now we're doing how to customize your workspace on Krita. First thing you need to do is go to uh, settings, but we haven't opened up a new file yet, so open that right up. Tons of options as we've gone over before. Um, so we're just going to create this one real fast. Boop. There we go. Okay. Go to settings. Then go to dockers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to want to um, go to something called quick settings docker. That's all the way down here. And then click that. Mm -hmm. There you go. Then it gives us yeah. this docker. Yeah. It appears down there. It's just an easier access to know what size pixel the brush you're using is. Yeah, and it gives you all the yeah. options kind of already there. Opacity and flow. Mm -hmm. So that's really neat and useful. Yeah, just kind of like a press and go kind of option. Yeah. yeah. So our next docker that we're going to set up, we'll go back to settings again. Mm -hmm. Go to docker. I'm going to go to tool options. There we go. And that's all the way down here. Mm -hmm. Click that. And opens up here. Uh, at first, you're not going to notice anything. Um, but if you select an actual brush, say, yeah, whatever one's visible there, you can move that up a little bit if you don't mind. Perfect. Awesome. 
if you go up to brush smoothing, there's a little like pop-up one. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Now we go into something you can see stabilizer, which you can adjust, you know, the stick. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is great. You can, so this is for, you know, if you want a, a smooth brush stroke or, or line work, you know, so that's smooth and corrected. So you just turn this on and you can have that feature. Yeah, <laughs> and move it around. Yeah, but if you don't want any anything getting in the way of just that natural feel of the brush, just turn that right off, and you'll actually have you know a very a low no little or no delay at all. So, yeah, we'll just turn it off at first. Just to, when you're getting used to the brushes, it's easier just to have them in their natural yeah. state. <laughs> yeah. True. Okay, we're gonna add another docker. Okay, go up to settings. Our settings. Okay, and we're gonna actually open up the color docker. So I think it's palette. palette. There it is, right there. And this one we actually have it. It's at a pixel art one, so it's just a basic, you know, palette. But you can come and adjust it. You know, there's app actually little options. So if you actually move to where the little, like it's sort of like the colors, uh, the little square. You can actually go and select any different palette that you have. If you even create your own palette, you can put them in here. But we're just using the pixel art one because it really is pretty looking. So yeah. it kind of has that, you know, basic, simple, you know, starting off kind of pixels. It's yeah. nice. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, so the next one we're going to be doing is going to be, uh, I think we're going to adjust the color palette ah. uh, selector, right? Because it's, it's up here, that little it's like triangle. that little menu yeah. right here. Would you mind opening that up or uh, expanding that yes. docker or window open so we can really give it a look-see? Just drag the little uh, dotted lines. There we <laughs> there go. We we go. Hyper big <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. And then you select that little window. This little thingy. Yeah. Looks like a little menu. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we want to go to Shade Selector. Yeah. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, on type, we're going to say don't show. Because we don't really want to have a shade selector right now. We just kind of want a simple little color wheel, you know, kind of thing going on. Uh, but we would like to see our color history. Yeah. Yes. So click color history. Um, and I think it's vertical for most when it first starts out, but we're setting it at horizontal. So it's actually going to be below the color wheel. Yeah. You know? Um, or the advanced color selector. Yeah. Um, all of these settings uh, won't take effect until you press OK. And then you'll actually see after you press OK. Look, see, there we go. Like, so any yeah. color you, you paint with? Mm -hmm. It'll be there. It'll be there. You'll and it'll see be it. in your history. It's, it's a nice little feature, so you can kind of always go back and do there whatever, you know? Yeah. Which is great. So that's a wonderful thing. The. Uh, <clears throat> Um, the next we're going to um, add uh, is going to be um, the overview docker. So we can kind of adjust the canvas any way we want to be able to see it. So uh, settings, dockers, and it's called overview. Okay, we right go. here. There we go. Perfect. So now, see this? This is kind of like that area where you can actually adjust the size or where you're viewing it you can move it around so say if you're you know uh, got a you know, zoomed in on a spot and you want to move that around so you have a better usage or you want to tilt or you know do any form of adjustment like that this is the place to do it yeah okay so now that we've have all of these windows and dockers open that look absolutely crazy and overwhelming <laughs> we're going to put them where we feel that they're comfortable um, so the first thing that we like is we're going to be mimicking just like a, a, a clip studio that we, you know, uh, uh, an workspace we like. So um, if you'd like, you can either follow along with us and just create the same workspace or, you know, just watch us and then you'll be able to honestly get the gist of it and just move these, you know, uh, dockers anywhere you would like. So first thing we should do is actually move the overview below at the bottom. All the way, doom, 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 doom. all the way down. Yeah, perfect. Let that go. Oop, oh, a little, there we not go. Too far. There we go. All the way down. There it is. Teeny tiny, even further. There we go. Maybe even further. Oh, oh even further. There we go. <laughs> perfect. Way down. Oh, sorry way about down. that. Third everybody. time's the charm. 
There it is. We got it. Okay, can we make that a little smaller, if you wouldn't mind? Yes. There we go, because it's a Whopper. Perfect. See? Nice and easy and manageable. Okay, so we're going to go to the Quick Settings Docker, which is like that easy access pixel, you know, uh, sizes and, and opacity. Mm -hmm. Just grab the actual name itself or, or that. Yes. Bring it all the way over to the left side of the screen. Way over there. There we go. Now, this is where it gets tricky, but it gets easy. So you just want to put it, pull it so that the blue area, it's right next to it. Ooh. Ooh. There, there it is. Perfect. See? Okay. Nice. And it, it, these things are going to obviously auto size, but did you notice how like the tool tray got yeah. all elongated? That's okay. If you drag these little lines, it's going to give you a little bit more room here. Nice. Then you can do the same and to the other too. side. Perfect. See? And now it's kind of like, oh, there they all are. Roomy. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. So, uh, what else? Oh, we want the um, tool options to be above that. Personally, that's me. That's how I look, you know. So if we take the actual tool options, which doesn't look like it has anything on it, we take that, we're going to drag it all the way over to the left side, but we're going to put it above the tools. Above, like, the actual quick. Sorry, yeah. Little, there we go. Above the quick start, if we can. F f fiddly. There, there we is. go. Perfect, <laughs> perfect. Easy breezy. Okay. The next thing is going to be the pr brush presets. So we're going to grab those brush presets. We're yep. going to put those on top of that. Got it. Right? Okay. Now I'm getting used to it. You get used to it. It's it's yeah. a little fin finicky sometimes, but you get used to it. They all Yes, it, it's actually quite neat too. You, If you want to change the way the, the icons look on the brush presets, you can always go to this little hamburger area here, and you can make it um, details where it will show the... Um, sort of the the name of the the tool that you're using yeah. as well and you can change the icon size yeah you can so you can make it a little neat. smaller yeah you, can make you know it which tiny. is kind of neat so you can actually have more visible yeah and and all of these huge. yeah it's kind of but it's neat because you it's easier to reference when, when you have a visual representation of the tool as well as it being written down yeah so yeah so details are definitely what you want to have selected so it gives you a little bit easier frame of reference so all of these dockers can be adjusted so they're a little bit more comfortable and not, you know, like all over the place. So just grab those little guys and bring it all the way down. Yeah. Do quick settings. Just bring that down. Yeah. Okay. A little further down. A little further down. There we go. Perfect. Then we'll move that one down, which is the tool options. Oh, no, it's okay. There you go. It's just, it's finicky, but you get used to the tool settings. Okay. Bring it a little bit higher. Okay, just a little bit. Perfect. Now, just so you can see if you can, you know, have enough room to adjust the brush, you know, you want to select the brush smoothing. It's presently on none, so you want to press stabilizer. Now, this is interesting because you're not going to be able to see all of it. Do you notice how it's kind of like you're right visible? There. So let's pull that over so we actually give ourselves a little bit more room. Nice. There we go. So now we've got the full tool set. It's kind of cool. Very. Okay. Um, yeah. So now we actually, if we can go over to the palette, can we bring the palette up right under the actual advanced color selector? Nice. Super cool, right? If we can, and you can resize the color selector, so maybe make that a little bit smaller just to give it a little, cool, a little bit, yep, perfect, right there. You got this, you got this. And then we'll go over to the overview, right? Woo! Ooh, getting crazy, getting zoomy, <laughs> zoomy. I'm excited. There we go. Perfect. See, that's why we have it here, so that you can actually adjust all this <laughs> Convenience. stuff. Convenience. Right? We've moved, make that a little smaller. Just bring it down. If you grab those little little guys and bring there them down. There we go. Just, there we go. Because, so, you know, all those layers, they add up. You need room. So, yeah. Okay. Guess what? Now that you have all of this going on, uh, oh, can we go back to brush smoothing and stabilization? Mm -hmm. And turn that on to none. Now, this is what's interesting. The actual tool tray over here, if you just select any one of those, feel free. You're going to notice that the tool options, if you could click one, you don't have to be specific. There we go. There we go. See, now this is why we want that tool option up, because it's going to actually allow you to, you know, figure out specific settings for each tool you select. Okay, so we'll go back to the paintbrush. Awesome. And all of these, if you press the brush presets, if you go to actually the, the word all, right there, 
this is a great setting because you can just say, I just want to ink right now, so I'm just going to ink. I don't need to go through all the brushes. This is going to show you all the ink brushes you've got. Now, a lot of these are going to be, you know, preset, and don't worry, there are tons of brushes that you're going to be able to import. This is an open source, you know, program, and there's so many people who've created brushes, and they'll just, you know, give you them for free, or you, know, you just download them and pay a, you know, a little price. But we'll get into that later. So feel free yeah. to select a brush that you feel comfortable using. Okay, and now we're, you know, we're using um, our actual pen display. Um, so we're going to give it a try with the pen display, picking one of those brushes. Ooh, could we do uh, Ink 3 G Pen? If you would yeah. Mind? Super cool. Okay. So, uh, ooh, now we got that purple. Let's pick black. Perfect. Okay. Let's give it a little, yeah, maybe zoom that in. Also, you know, which we'll get into later, this is just sort of making the palette, you know, making how your workspace look, you know, a little bit more efficient for you. There's also a way to do a quick, this is a really cool thing where you can click your digital pen and it will pop up a menu mm -hmm. and you'll be able to use that. We'll, we'll get into that later, but you, this is a great way. It's the if, best feature it's, of Krita. It really is it's so really cool. Amazing. You can actually click and use any of those pens here and yeah. move the really canvas yeah, and can, any way you want and so there's we'll, we'll get into that yeah. too later but it's very cool it's a great feature. in reality that feature takes away every other thing we're doing right now but it actually gives you so much more options in the future so you don't have to clutter your desktop or your workspace you know with anything you don't really want you just press that you know button on your pen and boom it's there so this is just you know a warm-up and honestly just a little something to have fun, just to show you this. This is a this is a really good professional program too. Yeah. You know, this really is. Uh, yeah, you're, it's a very professional piece of you know software. Um, we really hope um, this helps you out and makes Krita a little bit more approachable, or you know, easier for first timers. It can be really overwhelming at first, but this is a very very intuitive piece of software. This is created by artists, for artists, um, and it's an absolutely wonderful tool to use. So give it a try, uh, pick a brush, start out, have fun, trust us. Really, we promise you're not going to regret just having fun with this program. Just, you know, sitting down, fooling around with it a little, and just doing something. You know? So, yeah. yeah, and you could always just go if you mess up, still the same thing, edit, undo. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's all the same stuff. Yeah, it's all the same sort of thing. So mm -hmm. if you're used to, you know, another program, mm -hmm. you you could still get used to this too, yeah. you know? And we're using a pen display. Ours is the Huyan 24 4K Pro Canvas, you know all that. Um, <clears throat> it is working perfectly. Uh, pressure sensitivity... No, do you notice any lag? Using no, it? Yeah. actually, this is great, and right? yeah, and so is the um, the pen tip. Yeah, yeah the or, pen. Oh, parallax. Yes, right? the parallax. Yeah, the parallax isn't even really there. It's fascinating, but that definitely is all about the Huyan's actual technology, and and it works perfectly. I mean, it really doesn't. You know, I wouldn't worry about if you have a pen display and this not working. It will. These, you know, Krita supports um, Wacom. <clears throat> Excuse me, Wacom, Huyan, uh, X, X, what is it? XP, XP Pen. XP Pen, yeah. Um, so don't worry about it. Just give it a try, uh, and you know, you won't regret it. So there are going to be more videos to come, um, little vignettes about the specificities that Krita can offer you. Um, we're going to eventually get into even making web uh, a web comic, how to actually do it with Krita, opposed to another program, say Clip Studio or Photoshop, whatever. Um, because this isn't a Photoshop replacement or or a clone. This is specifically made for artists. So you know, it'll take a little bit of getting used to, but once you get there, it's going to be awesome. So give you a good option. Right? Yeah. It was crazy, cat. That's a, that's a, <laughs> yeah, see? 
so you can have As you fun. Can say, <laughs> see, it takes a little bit of getting used to because the pressure sensitivities for specific brushes will may work differently and for you. That's what's great. You can so, alter yeah. it. You can alter um, how you, the brush works for you if you're left-handed or right-handed as well. Yeah, exactly. So we'll go over all that too. Yeah, but yeah. how much this, flow goes on? This is all new. Yeah, this just pen, to get you started. Absolutely, <laughs> just to get started. So have fun. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um. Uh. So uh, we really hope this helps you out. You yeah. know, um, you know, uh, don't forget to have fun. Okay with this? Yeah, this an is experiment. This is a big deal, an experiment. Yeah, you know. So never stop creating, everybody. Okay. Mhm. Mm okay. Most Most charmly charmly out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Give it a chance. It works. It it's really awesome. Does. This is a truly professional program. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, as you can see. <laughs>